with a presentation from Roback and CEO Anders Monson. Take it away, Anders. Thank you. Right, so welcome to the presentation of Rovac. My name is Anders Manson and I'm the CEO of the company. Rovac is an immuno-oncology company uh, whose uh, drug candidate specializes in targeting metastatic cells in order to prevent cancer recurrence after primary tumor therapy. We're a clinical stage 2B company in prostate cancer and we're looking for a partner after study conclusion early 2022. The next slide is simply a safe harbor statement, which I will allow for just a few seconds before starting uh, the discussion on Rovac. So the patient that we hope to be able to help with our drug candidate is a patient that I think many people can relate to. It is the patient who is diagnosed with cancer, who undergoes uh, primary tumor therapy for that cancer and is cleared of cancer only to find months or years later that the cancer has recurred and it is now in its metastatic state, which of course has a far worse prognosis. As I suggested that this is a patient that many of us might know, uh, you will understand that this is a huge unmet medical need. In plain text, the general objective of our drug candidate RV001 is to prevent cancer recurrence after initially successful primary tumor therapy by eliminating potentially remaining metastatic cancer cells. You see, the problem that we're addressing is that at the time that the physician is addressing the primary tumor, there is no way of knowing for certain if isolated metastatic cancer cells have not already migrated out of the tumor and escaped into the body's tissue somewhere. Uh, and this is the reason for the recurrence of a cancer in those cases. And as I suggested, this is in a huge unmet medical need, not only in prostate cancer, which is the first indication that we're uh, engaging in, but also in many other indications. So how do we think that RV001, our drug candidate, can help? What is the mechanism of action? Well, it's essentially divided into three pillars, and one pillar is a really established one. That is the proven technology that we're based on, or methodology, if you like. It's sometimes referred to as cancer vaccination. More specifically, it is, in our case, antigen-based T-cell activation via dendritic cells and antigen-presenting cells. Now, I won't go into that in detail, but you can find more details on exactly how this works uh, at our homepage. To this pillar, we've added two new components. One is the target protein. We have a target protein called Rho-C. This is the very protein that gives to the metastatic cells their ability to migrate. So if there is no Rho-C, metastatic cancer cells cannot exist. This is a protein that is overexpressed specifically in metastatic cancer cells and in cancer stem cells. But the beauty is that it is not specific to any particular type of tissue. It is uh, prevalent in prostate cancer, metastatic cancer cells, but also in lung cancer, in colon cancer, in skin cancer, etc. So if the concept works in prostate cancer, it is likely to work in other, con in other cancers too. On top of this, we have introduced a new treatment paradigm. Whereas most immunotherapy is aimed at late-stage tumors, we are going for a nip-it-in-the-bud strategy, as I alluded to before, right after primary tumor therapy, trying to combat or knock out the isolated metastatic cancer cells prior to their being able to form solid metastases. Solid metastases or solid tumors have many biological mechanisms whereby they can try to avoid penetration by immune cells. So this is the reason for going for this paradigm shift. Where are we now? We're engaged in a phase 2b study in prostate cancer. The objective of this trial is to show that we're able to prevent progression in prostate cancer patients with biochemical failure, that's a rising PSA, after curative intent therapy, which would be surgery, a radical prostatectomy, or radiation therapy. The study will in examine 180 patients across 40 centers in Europe and the US, and it will finalize recruitment in quarter two next year, and conclude the results of the study early 2022. And at that time, we aim to make an exit with the project. I'll get back to that later. As I alluded to before, this is potentially a tissue agnostic treatment. So if we get a proof of concept in one cancer, which is now prostate cancer as the first one, we're able to expand this concept into other cancers. And indeed, we're also able to expand this concept within prostate cancer it is highly likely that we could expand it into earlier stage patients uh, as monotherapy, 
and possibly also into later stage patients in combination with the already established therapies in this arena, for example, hormone, uh, hormone therapy. But it doesn't stop there. We could expand this into other cancers as well. As I alluded to before, Rho C is a, an overexpressed phenomenon, also in metastatic cancer cells, or for example, skin cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, many other cancers. So it has huge potential uh, once a proven proof of concept is established. A few words on the compound and formulation itself. It's a peptide-based product which is uh, of significance. This means that it is uh, inexpensive and not cumbersome to produce, which allows it to address a mass market. And we are addressing it as first-line therapeutic, uh, first-line pharmaceutical therapy. Um, it is given us 12 subcutaneous injections over the course of a year. It starts with one injection every other week, then monthly injections. And six months after the final monthly injection, a booster injection is given, and that's it. We do have solid patent protection around this, and further market exclusivity would be offered by the biological license application uh, that would take this compound to market. So let's look at the results that we have so far. We conducted a phase one study in prostate cancer. This concluded in 2018. There was a one-year follow-up that concluded in 2019. This is of 22 patients, uh, and I should also say that a, a, an article summarizing this, this study was published as recently as last week. So 22 patients, of course, this is a small study, which is always the case for phase one, two. So all the results that I discussed will have to be taken with that caveat. But we did indeed see very good results here. Of course, the primary aim of a phase one, two is safety. We saw excellent safety results, only uh, having uh, reported mild and reversible injection site reactions as the pertinent side effect. At secondary endpoints, we also measured some uh, efficacy parameters. We saw that uh, after the final injection, we had the desired rho C-specific immune response in 86% of patients. Uh, and indeed, in the one-year follow-up, we saw that it was also 86% of patients that had this immune response indicating a long-term effect, which is so important as we're aiming to treat preventively. We did also see cancer-specific uh, efficacy in this, even though there are sm small patient numbers, but in the patients that had measurable PSA, we did see a markedly prolonged PSA doubling time, indicating that we're able to procrastinate or prevent or impair the disease progression. So all in all, excellent results. Uh, of course, again, 22 patients, but these are the results that we aim to confirm with statistical significance in the phase 2b. Now, all this is good news, and of course, as a potential shareholder or as an existing shareholder, you should also seek to uh, verify this with third-party validation. We have two companies performing analyses on Rovac. One is Edison Group, which has been doing so for quite a while, but we also recently added analyse guidance from Actius Boana. Both of these have performed analyses on ROVAC that you can find through our homepage. And both of these have a very high value assessment of our project. We also have third party validation in the form that we have got a grant from Horizon 2020, which is the European Union's Research and Innovation Fund. We've got that both for phase one and phase two. The latest edition was last year with 2.5 million euros uh, as a, a grant to our company. And they also uh, got a quote here from that motivation, suggesting that RVW1 could be a potential game changer for cancer therapy. And of course, there is third party validation in the fact that we've got INDs both in the US and in Europe to do the large scale phase 2B trial. So uh, looking into the analysis, what could be a potential deal that we could do after phase 2B? Well, Edison suggests a few benchmarks in their account of our of the analysis of Roback, And of course, the vast majority of the deal value is in milestones and royalties. But just looking for a moment at the upfront payment, the median value that they suggest is about $100 million, already many times the market cap of Roback. And if you look at Annalise Guiden and Axis Barnas analysis, uh, they come up with similar numbers. And it is a very clear strategy of ours to go for a uh, an, uh, an exit in terms of a licensing or an acquisition deal after phase 2b. Do we have the right people on board in order to execute this? I suggest that we do. My own experience is mainly from large pharmaceutical companies where I've worked extensively with uh, mergers and acquisition. 
leading transactions up to a 700 million US dollar deal value. There is ample experience also in the rest of the company. We have Henrik, our CFO, who is also experienced in transactions. And we have also solid experience uh, also from Big Pharma in uh, Stefan uh, Jörnsson, who is our CDO. Uh, last but not least, I would like to mention and highlight our scientific advisory board, which also features very prominent people, uh, perhaps best exemplified by Professor Per Anders Auerhansson, who used to be the Secretary General of the European Association of Urology, which is also a validation of a kind of our product. Finally, summarizing, RB001 is currently in clinical phase 2B for prostate cancer. It is validated by several parties backed by the European uh, Horizon 2020 program. If we get a proof of concept in prostate cancer, there is obvious room for expansion into other cancers as well. And we have a very clear and transparent strategy to seek uh, a partnership after phase 2B. Possibly uh, 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 an option deal could be made prior to that. So that is ideally a clear and concise message. And I thank you for listening. And thank you for the presentation. Um, if we look at something that's happened fairly recently, you applied for a fast track designation with the American FDA. Hmm? Can you tell us a little bit more about this process and what it means for your candidate? Yes. Uh, I mean, if we were to get a fast track designation, it would be tremendous for the company because, well, first of all, it's, it, it allows for practical advantages in terms of communicating with and seeking advice from the FDA. But on top of that, of course, it would be a great recognition and another important third party validation of our project if the FDA were to give it so much recognition as to put it in the top priority ranking of fast track designation. And if we look at, you mentioned that this is a type of patient that most of us probably know. What would it mean for these patients to have access to a candidate like yours? Wow, that's a very profound question, but... Uh, Feeling very ob profound today. <laughs> obviously, I mean, in, in this sort of situation, uh, obviously I've not had the experience myself, but if I were in this situation and there, were, there was a drug available that uh, improved on my chances of, of not having a cancer recurrence, uh, it would mean the world to me. Because mm. these patients undergo a lot of mental suffering, of course. Yes. I mean, in the case of prostate cancer, there is no, no therapy available for these patients in this setting. So after primary tumor therapy, they're essentially just sent home only to undergo PSA measurement at regular intervals. But there is nothing they can do to prevent the recurrence of the cancer. And I think that feeling is probably not a good one. No. Uh, if there was something available that you could take to prevent the recurrence of the cancer, I think a lot of patients would be willing to do that. Of course. And if we look ahead to, to next year, what are the most important aims for Rovac for 2021? Next year, we will finalize the recruitment of uh, the phase 2B, and then we will run preclinical studies in parallel with this and also do some other formulation work. Uh, the aim is, of course, that in the start of 2022, to have the phase 2B results at hand, to have all the preclinical work finalized, and to be able to hand over to potential partner uh, the results of the phase 2B, but also other indicative evidence uh, that suggests that the product is also efficacious in other types of cancer. Well, thank you. We look forward to following you in the coming year then. Thank you.